So just what is Arches for Science? Arches for Science is meant to help conservation scientists do some fairly important data management tasks. It will allow us to secure, more easily retrieve, visualize, to compare and share the scientific data that form a research project undertaken in the lab, as well as manage some of the project tasks associated with that work. The reason we've been building this system is to address particular needs that we've identified in the conservation science field. First, that many organizations lack uniform ways of organizing data that allow easy data retrieval and sharing. So finding a way to better manage our data will enhance scientists' abilities to both find data after it's been collected and to either use that data or reuse it for additional needs that were not identified when the data itself was collected. By so doing, we hope to minimize data loss at the institutional level, allowing the data to live more sustainably over time after individual research projects end. The system, which we're calling Arches for Science, is being built by the GCI as an extension of what's known as the Arches platform, as open source software that will be made freely available to other conservation labs worldwide. So this is what Arches for Science is seeking to do, but how we go about actually accomplishing it requires us to first understand what types of data it is that we're seeking to manage. It's worth taking a moment to think about what's involved in the examination of a cultural heritage object, such as the painting that you see here to determine what would need to be accommodated in a data management platform. The first step of this is to kind of break down all the parts of a technical examination to the individual concepts that you would need to render computer readable and therefore manageable in any form of technological solution. So for example, the painting that you see here is a physical thing that exists in the world. It's also part of one or more collections or sets of objects. It is one of several paintings by Manet, for example, and it may also be one of several objects that were examined for a specific purpose, in this case, for an exhibition. This painting also demonstrates the concept of a person in several ways. It is associated with its painter, of course, the, uh, that is Manet, and all of the personal details that we know about him. But it also evokes the person of Jean de Marsay, who is the sitter for this portrait. There are then additional people connected to the painting in the form of the individuals who undertook the technical analysis, who themselves may be part of a set, that is a research group that studied the particular painting. When we did our technical examination, we did a particular series of experiments using specific scientific equipment and made observations about the object under study. So the concept of an examination observation also becomes part of our project. We also took a few small samples from the surface to better understand the painting's material, which is of course common in a technical study, and the resulting samples then become physical things in their own right, just like the painting. And in this case, we also create data around the process or the sampling activity by which they were removed. In addition to samples, we collect what scientists often think of as data, the spectral data that you see at the upper right, or image data that you see at center. All of these are essentially files or digital resources of some form that could be, say, stored in a file structure on a computer. So we have all of these digital resources that are, of course, an integral part of the technical examination. These digital resources are analyzed, interpreted, synthesized, and typically turned into some form of dissemination, whether that's an internal report, uh, a blog post, a publication, or a book, as shown here. Any of these could be thought of under the concept of a textual work, which itself may be a digital resource. So these are just some of the types of data that we need to be able to manage for something that we think of as routine in the lab, a technical examination. But as you hear me talk about it, hopefully it's already clear that it's not just these concepts, but also critically the connections between them that matter. The fact that a sample is a physical thing, for example, that has a specific relationship to the physical thing of the painting. And that's not, that's just one of the connections. There's many connections throughout the project that really form the crux of what we're doing in the lab. And so really, Arches for Science is a system that's meant to, as I said, help us secure, retrieve, visualize, compare, and share data but it's one that captures all of those complex concepts or components of a project and the relationships between them 
preserving that contextual information over time to help additional researchers understand and use the data in the future.